Hey guys, Dozer here bringing you a new video talking about the Outsiders release weekend, the fallout of the cards hitting the market, the big tournament results, and some of the rumblings about bans. Let's get right into it. So right off the bat, let's talk about Codex of Frailty. This is the big boogeyman of Outsiders. This is the big card that's on everybody's mind. What's the deal with this card? Well, the big thing about this card is that it's a hybrid card between Assassin and Ranger and allows you to take attack actions from your graveyard and put them face down into your arsenal. At the same time, you give your opponent a Frailty token and give yourself a Ponder token. And all you have to do to do that effect is to discard a card. But it's even better than that because you force your opponent to put a card from their graveyard into their arsenal if there's space, and then they have to discard a card. And if you play this card without any cards remaining in your hand, you just don't have to discard anything. This card's pretty good. It can give you a lot of value, especially in those very small hands where maybe you pump, pump, pump as Azalea, drop the Codex, come in with a zero cost arrow, draw off of Ponder. Like, it's a lot of value, right? Very powerful card. We saw in the big brawl that happened over the weekend that Brody Spurlock and Levi Rauch went head to head in the finals, both on Azalea, notably. And it was a very interesting and fun time to see Azalea go from zero to hero and all off the back of the new Outsiders cards. Things like Infecting Shot, the Blood Rot Pox tokens, and not least of all, Codex of Frailty. Already, people are calling for Codex of Frailty to be banned, which I don't really see a, a reason for. I think um, that's quite extreme. I think that, um, yes, Codex of Frailty is a good card, but it's nowhere near ban worthy. If you think back to Monarch meta with Chain and Art of War, Art of War for Chain just kind of said, hey, generate two free resources and draw two cards because you didn't actually lose the attack action that you banished because you could just play it because of its blood debt status, right? It was still available to you to play, and you still got all the benefits of the plus one damage, of the go-agains. And so yeah, Art of War was insane for Jane, and he abused it like no other hero. You had people like Oldham and Icelander using Channel Lake Frigid, you've had Starvo, right, coming out the gate and just abusing everything. And so we didn't see bans for those, and I don't think we're gonna be seeing a Codex of Frailty ban anytime soon. And on top of that, you know, it's it's not perfect, right? It's not a perfect card. Yeah, you can give yourself an, an attack action card. Yeah, you can give yourself that ponder token, but it's it's good value over time. But Ranger has been struggling really hard for a long time. And you can't just look at one powerful card in isolation, right? You have to look at it in the context of all the cards around it. You know, Viserai had Skeleta plus Sonata Arcanics for quite a long time, but it was not until we had the Revel in Runebloods, the Swarming Gloom Veils, where he was really able to leverage those big hands with lots of go again, lots of rune chance, and really start to pop off and make that combination overbearing. I think it's the same thing right now for Ranger and Assassin. You know, these cards are very powerful, but at the end of the day, they do have enough um, downsides as far as clunkiness of trying to use it, or maybe you don't have the right target in your graveyard yet. You know, these kind of things where it's not going to always be the maximum value scenario, and your opponent's going to be able to get some stuff back too. Like, do you really want to give your opponent a Command and Conquer back or a Crippling Crush, you know, things like this? Uh, probably not, right? And so the um, Codex of Frailty card is very powerful, but in the context of Ranger, it's probably okay. I mean, we'll see, right? We'll see over time if it becomes really that overbearing, but uh, I don't really think it is. I think it's about time that Ranger got some time in the sun, and I think that if they get a little bit of extra help to get some consistency with their arrows, get some consistency with maintaining some card advantage when they have to kill you right before they run out of cards because they don't have a real weapon like a hammer or a sword or something where they need to be able to present lethal before they run out of their arrows and their buffs, I think it's totally fine and reasonable for them to have some power cards. Kind of like how Lexi has had Three of a Kind or Rain Razors for quite some time, right? So I'm not really too worried about that. At the same time, you know, because of how powerful Codex of Frailty is and because of how well Azalea performed at the tournament over the weekend, we've already seen Codex of Frailty go from a $13 to $15 Majestic to a $40 Majestic as a non-foil. Wow, that's a big jump, right? Uh, so what I wanted to also just throw a quick side note in here for a minute is, do you need Codex of Frailty to play Ranger? No, 
No, you do not. It is a very good card, but it's not necessarily required for you to play the deck. The commons and the rares and a lot of the cheaper majestics can do that just fine. Things like your infecting shots, your sedation shots, things like your take aims, or even cards like your seek and destroys are all really powerful and really useful so that you can try and play those more budget friendly ranger builds. At the same time, I know that it's more fun to have all the pretty toys and stuff to play with, and you might not be willing to drop $40 per copy of Codex of Frailty right now, and that's totally fine. Remember that the prices of cards tends to go down over time. In almost all cases, the supply takes some time to hit the market because people have to get money together to go buy the boxes, crack them open, list the cards they don't want to use, and it takes time for all that supply to get through the market and get to the other players. So remember when everyone wants the card all at once and very few people are supplying it, you know, you're going to have those big price spikes because the people who want it bad enough are going to pay the most for it. And so what we'll really end up seeing over time is the cards will go down in price, maybe not back down to that $15 anytime soon, because again, it's very powerful, but you'll probably see a big retrace on the prices of a lot of these cards because some more supply will just come to market. Because you have to remember that, let's say a box of Outsiders costs $80. Let's say it's 90 with tax and whatever the case is, right? If it costs $90 and even call it a clean 100 for the sake of math, if it costs a clean $100 and you pull one Codex of Frailty, you've made about half the price of your box back. And you just got a whole bunch of other cards from it. You could have gotten a Legendary, you could have gotten multiple Majestics that come together to make quite a bit of value. And you could draft it with your friends and do a lot of fun things with that box. Well, there you go, right? That's not a bad thing. The more expensive these Majestics get, as long as the prices of the boxes stay relatively the same, you're gonna have a better and better chance of getting value out of the box when you open it. Or even if you don't open it, the people who do have the funds and the desire to buy those boxes and crack to try and flip the cards will be able to produce more of that supply, right? They'll be further incentivized to do it. They'll undercut each other to try and get their copies sold and liquidate that asset to get some cash to then buy into more boxes or whatever else they're gonna buy into. And you, as the lucky consumer, get to capitalize on that by buying up the cards for a price that fits your desired, like, uh, you know, your level for the demand of that card. Remember, we do a luxury cardboard hobby. If you don't have the funds to justify spending $120 on a playset of a single Majestic, don't, it's okay. It's okay to wait. It's okay to kind of proxy the card and wait until you have the funds around to afford the card or to wait for the price to come down to a price point that you're more comfortable with. As well as, you know, maybe if you're at locals and you're paying your $10 entry fee or whatever for the tournament and you get your prize packs, you might just pull some of those cards anyway. So don't feel too rushed to get the cards. I know that it's really exciting. I know that even myself, I've had to really restrain myself to not go out and just buy a bunch of boxes and try and fish for those really good pulls, but it is a much better alternative to go get those singles and to let the stores open the boxes, let them sell the singles, let the people who buy lots of boxes for their collections, right, sell you the singles, and you know, again, try and use draft and limited as your chance to kind of pick up these cards and not necessarily go all in on cracking a ton of boxes because unless you're trying to collect and unless you're trying to get those cold foils or those really high rarity cards you will be much better served cost basis wise to just buy the singles after they've cooled down a little bit and after the supplies had time to catch up with the demand. So yeah, Codex of Frailty doesn't need to be banned. It's a good card. We should all be happy that our flesh and blood cards are starting to get some value. I understand that, you know, as someone who's been in the situation where you have very little money to spend on card games, it can be really disappointing to not be able to have access to a lot of the meta decks maybe because you don't have every perfect optimal card to fit in there. But at the same time, just remember that the um, this is a hobby, this is a luxury cardboard hobby, and the LSS, right? LSS, Legend Sword Studios, has to make profit on their boxes, which has to come from bo uh, stores buying their boxes, which has to come from stores profiting off the boxes, and them having more value in the singles, more value in the boxes themselves, is gonna help drive that. And so for the long-term health of the game, it's gonna be better for a couple fewer Majestics to be present in the boxes to kind of drive up those prices in the secondary market without breaking the bank. Because remember, you know, if we have to spend, you know, $40 on frailty codexes, well, that's a lot, but what about the costs of the other cards in the deck, like your infecting shots? It's like 15 cents. What's the cost of your, you know, 
most of your commons and rares, most of the bulk of the cards in the deck are pretty cheap, right? They're anywhere from, you know, under a dollar to five dollars. And so with a couple standout cards costing some money or even maybe just the skull bone cross wrap and, you know, if you want to use tunic, you can, but they're perfectly reasonable substitutes like the new trench of sunken treasure, which costs, I think, around forty dollars right now. TCG player is a legendary. That's very comparable to tunic in power level. So, you know, you have options to play the game and at those with those collector's pieces at a more reasonable price point. And again, you can proxy stuff until you're ready to go all in on supporting that play style and supporting that hero if it's not something you're 100% sure on doing yet. And so, yeah, I just want to throw this out here today to talk a little bit about all the bad feelings that people have been having from the god boxes versus the non-god boxes of Outsiders versus the uh, tournament results of the Ranger and maybe calling for some bans really early. Again, that's just kind of weird to me, but you know, it is what it is. And to also talk a little bit about urging people to share in some temperance and some patience with me in the market, letting things kind of cool off a little bit, not necessarily getting all in on the hype because yes, it's very exciting, but we can all take a second, breathe, let the prices come down, let the supply enter the market and our wallets will definitely be thanking us. So. If you guys have any thoughts on how you feel about any crazy god boxes that you had, that you've seen, any kind of duds that you had, some kind of feelings about the set that you're not happy about, or some things you're really excited about, like the new heroes, the new cards, or maybe the price that you got in at the right time, you know, feel free to leave those in the comments and be happy to talk to you all about that. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.